Good morning. Today is Monday, February 8th, 2021. There's a fundamental principle of Jewish law that we have mitzvot that come from the Torah, from God. We refer to that as Dioraiasa, Aramaic for from the Torah. And we have laws that are Durabanan, rabbinic. Now, within the category of Dioraiasa, of biblical laws that come directly from God, there are two types. One is Torah Shabiksav, the written law. That means the mitzvot in the five books of Moshe. Then there is Torah Shabal Peh, the oral law. That is, as God was telling Moshe the words to write down in the Chumash, in the Torah, God would then say, now Moshe, I want to explain to you orally what this means. Later, the oral law, Torah Shabal Peh, was written down in the Gemara, together with the subsequent rabbinic legislation. But it's important to keep in mind the Torah Shabal Peh, the original oral law that comes directly from God and was explained orally to Moshe, that is God's oral explanation, not a later interpretation to, for example, soften or change or ameliorate the original divine law, the biblical law. And that is an opinion, by the way, that um, is widely quoted by many others, but our belief is that the written law as well as the oral law that Hashem explained to Moshe comes directly from God and has the status of biblical law. One of the most famous examples of this is in this week's Parsha, the portion of Mishpatim. The Torah says, very famous passage, Ki yinsu anashim, if there are two men who are fighting and one of them cause an injury to another person, what should the punishment be? Ayin tachas ayin. An eye for an eye. Shein tachas shein. A tooth for a tooth. Yod tachas yod. A hand for a hand. Regel tachas rogel. A foot for a foot. Which seems to say, the written word seems to say, if one person causes damage to another and causes his eye to be blinded, then if the court finds him guilty, what the court will do is they will blind his eye. And if a person caused an injury to his fellow that his hand had to be cut off, then the court, if it found him guilty, would cut off his hand. Along comes the oral law and says, no, Moshe, I want you to write down ayin tachas ayin, an eye for an eye, but I want to explain to you what that means is it's a monetary punishment. By the way, we know from other passages in the Torah that an act of injury of another person only carries with it a monetary punishment. So that's clear from the Torah. But here, God says to Moshe, write down the words ayin tachas ayin, an eye for an eye. And now I want to explain to you, Moshe, what I mean by that is pay the amount of the value that the person caused damage by putting out the other person's eye, but it's purely monetary. I heard this week part of a lecture from the Rav, Rav Yosef Soloveitchik, it was given in 1954 in Boston. And Rav Salvechik asked the following question. First, he says that this truth, which I am sharing with you, that the explanation of ayin tachas ayin is to pay a monetary fine, that is pirushim hamukubole mimosh rabbeinu. This is what Moshe heard orally directly from God at Mount Sinai. And there is no disagreement about that. There is no 
opinion within normative Judaism that somehow later rabbis reinterpreted God's words to make them easier or more palatable. No, it came exactly like this from God. So it begs the question, why write it like this? Why would God say to Moshe, write down the words, I and tachas I and an eye for an eye, which by the way, has led to all sorts of misunderstanding. And you can understand the, the misunderstanding because the, the Torah says an eye for an eye. And you, you may know the history of this. For millennia, people have criticized Judaism and compared it, contrasted it with more um, enlightened legal systems, talking about Judaism and Jewish law being cruel and barbaric. Why lead to all of that misunderstanding if in fact God's intention was that a financial penalty should be paid? Why doesn't the Torah say, Kesev tachas ayin? If you put out someone's eye, you have to pay a financial penalty. Why doesn't the Torah say that? So here's the answer that Rav Salvechik gives. Had the Torah in fact written, Kesev tachas ayin, if you put out someone's eye, you have to pay a penalty. It would have been the greatest profaning of the honor to a human being. Because it would mean that our limbs, our senses, eyes, ears, our sense of touch, our ability to walk, our ability to talk, everything that defines a human being has an economic value. And that would seem to imply that if a person has a lot of money, he should have the right to put out someone's eye, God forbid, and pay for it because there's a value for it. The Torah itself says, Kesev tachas ayin, theoretically, if the Torah would have said that. And this is a contradiction to the principle of Tselem Elohim, that every human being is created in God's image and has infinite value. And that means that our limbs have infinite value. Our ability to see has infinite value. Our ability to hear and to touch and to move. All of those aspects of humanity have infinite value. Because they are created in God's image. And therefore, if a person causes an injury of ayin, putting out, God forbid, someone's eye, a person expresses anger or revenge and takes away someone's ability to see or to hear or to touch or to act, that person deserves to lose that limb, that ability, because what that person did is a terrible crime. There is midas hadin, the attribute of strict justice. That requires full retribution. Punishment must be equivalent to the damage that is caused. That is what strict justice requires. And that is expressed in the writing of the written Torah, Ayin tachas ayin, an eye for an eye. But there is another aspect of justice taught by God at the same time to Moshe, and that is hamtokas hadin, the sweetening of justice, attenuated justice, which says, really, this assaulter deserves to have his or her eye put out. Midas Hadin, strict justice is correct. But we human beings, we cannot do it. We cannot do it because it would make us, the court, cruel. We, man, are not great enough to impose that kind of punishment without being affected by such an act of gruesome violence against this criminal. And therefore, God says to Moshe, 
write down the words ayin tachas ayin. According to strict justice, you deserve to lose your eye if you put out someone's eye. But Moshe, the way I want you to impose it practically is through a monetary payment. It turns out that both are true. One is true in the ideal, in theory, and the other is true in practice, in order to protect us from the cruelty that would be necessary to impose it. This is an incredibly important lesson for us to learn. It's true about every legal system, but it's particularly true about Jewish law. Law is more than rules to impose and punishments to exact. Laws set expectations within society. Laws create values for society. So even when they are not relevant laws, or even if they're laws that are not applied, they still have deep meaning in the lessons and values that they teach about what we as a society hold to be true. And also, laws are meant to refine those who uphold them, and especially to refine the character of those who impose them. It's true for every legal system, but it is fundamental to Jewish law. And this is the meaning of our passage, where it's written one way, but God explains it to Moshe another way. But this theme of the wider view of understanding what laws are for, this is the theme of our entire Parsha, the portion of Mishpatim. My friends, I want to wish you a great day. Stay safe, stay legal, and I look forward to seeing all of you soon in person.